Much of the liturgy that you are about to hear and we hope to take part in is derived from material that is not the property of St Mary's Church, Bletchingley. We are grateful to the National Council of Churches in the US for permission to read the passages of Scripture, which come from the new revised standard version of the Bible, Anglicised edition, to Pauline Books and Media for the use of the reflections and prayers from their publication, The Folly of God, and to Sigurd Kurder Stiftung Kunst und Bibel in Elbangen, Germany, for the presentation of the images. Thank you to all of you, especially for the help you gave us at short notice in the time of the virus. Welcome to our devotion of the Stations of the Cross, which is practiced here at St Mary's Bletchingley during Lent every noon on Saturday. We welcome you to our worship and we hope you will find it fruitful in our Lord. Let us pray. Jesus, our Saviour, behold us at your feet asking for your mercy. Grant that as we trace this path of sighs and tears, our hearts may be so touched with contrition and repentance that we may be ready to embrace all the crosses and sufferings of this, our life and our pilgrimage. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. World without end. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Mark 15, verses 12 to 15. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Where can we find real strength? Where is the truth? In those with position or power? Or in the one whose head is bowed? whose arms are lowered in peace, only being raised when nailed to the cross. How many innocent people pay the price of dishonesty, of abuse of power, even by those who act in God's name, indeed by anyone who manipulates the truth of the gospel to justify violence, non-involvement, refusal of truth, how ready we all are to surrender, to surrender to hypocrisy and to hide behind the mask of our lack of courage. We would rather not get involved, distance ourselves from the wrong we see around us, keep silence in the face of injustice inflicted on our brothers and sisters, friends, neighbours and loved ones. All we want is to keep our name clean our reputation untarnished. Jesus, you, you didn't, didn't hesitate, hesitate to pay the price of our wrongdoing. Give, give us the courage to face the truth when we fail. Give us the strength to be true to your gospel and to be true to our brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ crucified, have, have mercy, mercy on us.
the second station. Jesus embraces the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the, the world. world. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 21 and 12. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only one who does the will of my Father in heaven. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. It takes courage to embrace that which we would really rather not, to reach out each day in our world of violence and atrocities, to make a decision to accept Jesus and the apparent paradox of the cross. Our hands are a precious gift. We can create or destroy, lift up or force down. We can embrace or push away. Jesus used his hands to bless, to gather the lost into his arms, all the time announcing the good news, bringing peace, until at last he opened his hands to the cross, accepting and embracing it. He embraces our sorrows, our cross. Lord Jesus, the mystery of your cross is at the heart of our lives. Help us embrace the world as you did. Give us the perseverance we need to make our world a better place. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. We all know the feeling, I can't go on. The feeling of the very life being squeezed out of us. Lack of love in our lives can weigh us down. When we are rejected, we become vulnerable. We respect neither others nor ourselves. We become violent and abusive towards those who are more vulnerable than we are. Our human dignity is lost, and we condemn ourselves to shame and degradation. Jesus died to save us from ourselves. He took away the sin of the world. He restored in us the likeness of God. Jesus, you, you bore our sins so that we might live. live. You are the rock of our strength. Do not allow us to neglect those who are crushed by their own mistakes, those who feel rejected, the sinful. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 34 to 35. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. 
and a sword will pierce your own soul too. It is hard to stand by and see a child, a friend or a loved one struggle with life. Sometimes it is difficult even to say the right thing. Often we don't even know what to say. We would like to spare those we love the burden of carrying their own crosses. Love is utterly vulnerable, completely defenceless, open to whatever comes. To love is to set the beloved free to follow the demands of God, whatever the cost. All we can do is to be there, being, consoling, supporting, encouraging. These are sacred moments. Lord Jesus, your, your mother, mother shared, shared your pain with your, your destiny, destiny, as we, we so often hurt those we love and fail those we hold dear. dear. Help us to share in the healing power of your love. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The fifth station. Simon, a stranger, helps Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. A reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 21. They compelled a passer-by who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Our streets are crowded with people struggling under the weight they carry. Desperation, homelessness, hunger, violence, abuse. Do we have the courage to stop, to get involved? Perhaps we would rather keep our distance. Strangers, refugees, are they any concern of ours? Who is my neighbour? What happens around us affects us all in one way or another. Called to be one, our command is to love each other. We owe each other love and support. Simon of Cyrene can inspire us. By being willing to help a stranger, he became as one with Jesus, the Son of God. Lord, as, As we, we journey, journey help, help us, us to see those who stagger along the path of the cross, the refugees, the homeless, the lonely. We ask for strong shoulders on which to ease the yoke of others, and a heart filled with love for all. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The sixth station, Veronica, a gesture of love. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come! You are, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, 
who are members of my family, you did it to me. Where do we see the face of Christ today? He told us where we can see his face. If only we have the courage to look at hungry people, those who are naked, those who are lonely, imprisoned, the least, the last, there we see Jesus himself. A gesture of love to release the pain of these brothers and sisters restores in us our likeness to Jesus. We often hear of heroic acts that help save the lives of many. How often, though, do we hear of the simple acts of love, the little ways in which love is shown? Being beside someone on their way to death and mopping their brow is a simple yet love-filled intimate act which can only bring us closer to Christ. Lord, help, help us, us to recognise you in the hidden corners of our world, in the forgotten ones, ones those who mean so little to the world, whose presence is never greeted with a smile. We ask that we might reflect your love for all people in everything that we do. Lord Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The seventh station. Jesus falls for a second time with many. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Pressures from society, our peers, or possibly even our own weak wills may hamper our being true followers of Jesus. It can be difficult to lead the way, yet we know the exhilaration of winning a race or struggling for what is right in life. We know what we should do, and yet we carry on doing the things we shouldn't. It may be difficult for us today to see any value in the cross. Suffering is a great mystery to us. We may have feelings of helplessness and find ourselves only able to ask, why? And yet the choice remains with us. Do we allow ourselves to be crushed beneath the weight of our daily cross? Or do we pick ourselves up and follow in the way of Jesus? Lord, Lord to, to pick, pick up our cross and follow you is a difficult request. It may be that in today's world our responsibilities are our crosses. Whatever the cross, may we understand that only with you is the burden light. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verses 27 to 31. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? 
Mothers, women, they know the pain of loving. In the face of human sorrow and tragedy, mothers are those who pay the highest price of seeing their own children, flesh of their flesh, being deprived of their dignity, abused, tortured or killed. Mothers know the hard way of the cross. The cross. This horrible means of torture of the past has been replaced with modern and more sophisticated means of mass destruction. Yet Jesus calls women to nurture a better world so as to spare humanity from even greater tragedy. Indeed, he calls us all to have a mother-like heart, to nurture life around us. Jesus, you, you are, are the beginning, beginning and the end, end the, the one who leads us out of death into life. Help, help us be people who nurture, giving life to those who feel abandoned or let down. down. Jesus Christ crucified, have, have mercy, mercy on us. The ninth station. Jesus falls for the third time, the fall of the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand again and again all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away and broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me sit in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has walled me about so that I cannot escape. He has put heavy chains on me. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stones. He has made my paths crooked. In everyone's life, there are moments of inner loneliness, a rejection no words can describe. It is the isolation of the aged, the loss of a dear one, the collapse of a family's fortune, the horror of war, the loss of a job, the breaking of a relationship, dreams that don't come true. Weighed down by the awfulness of it all, we feel like worms trampled underfoot. Jesus experienced this emptiness as we do, human struggling, but he drank the chalice to the very dregs, still trusting in the Father's unfailing love. With him we will be able to rise up from the struggles that bind us and continue on our way to our final goal. Lord Jesus, when, when all, all looks to be too much, much when, when we feel overburdened by life, when, when nothing, nothing makes any sense, sense any longer, Allow the warmth of your love to touch us. Give us the strength to say our Amen to God and to trust in the Father's care. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped and his garments divided. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 23 to 24. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, 
Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfil what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and from my clothing they cast lots. Before his passion, Jesus prayed that we may be one. Yet division and war among his followers have marked the history of Christianity. Blood has been shed in Jesus' name too often by too many claiming to possess the true faith, Jesus himself. Our divisions are the crosses on which Jesus continues to die. Very often our diversity becomes division. Diversity is a gift of the Spirit and enriches the whole body, while division is the work of the evil one and impoverishes us all. There is one body, one baptism, one faith. We belong to each other. Every day we have the opportunity to work for unity and peace within ourselves, our family and our churches. Or we may refuse to love our brothers and sisters, deepening the mark of the cross in our world. Lord, Lord our, our ways are not peaceful ways. ways. Fill us with your spirit, that we may truly become your people, the one body of Christ. Heal our divisions and give us courage to work for unity and peace. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The eleventh station. Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 29 to 32. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. There are moments in everyone's life when we feel as though we are nailed as if on a cross, unable to move, totally at the mercy of others. It may be because of sickness, disability, fear, violence or hurt, physical or psychological. When we feel helpless, we come face to face with our own truth and the truth of those around us. We can become victims of others, or we may make others pay the price of our indifference, of our insensitivity. As we look at the faces of those around Jesus as he is being nailed to the cross, can we see ourselves? Lord of love and compassion, help us to be true to ourselves to others and to you. Give us a sensitive heart to ease the burden of those who can't help themselves. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. As scripture says, you didn't accept sacrifices and holocausts. You gave me a body. Here is the body of Christ, the innocent victim who takes upon himself human sorrow. Jesus dying on the cross, his whole being stretched to the limits of human bearing. His tortured body recalls the torments of millions of men, women and even small children in concentration camps and present victims of racism, hatred and war. 
Violence is a commonplace experience in our homes. We run the risk of becoming used to the horrible scenes of violence shown by the media. Brutalised bodies of children, people old and young, victims of terrorism and war. We may become so accustomed to what we see that we can watch undisturbed, making no distinction between fiction and reality. Even worse, we may be among those to inflict violence to a greater or lesser degree, or we could be onlookers doing nothing to stop the violence. Lord, dying you destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. Fill our hearts with your courage so that we no longer remain bystanders, but can be counted among those who work for justice and peace. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The Thirteenth Station Jesus in his mother's arms We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. These words must have resounded in Mary's heart so many times as the mystery of Jesus unfolded day by day. How can we call blessed a mother whose child has been rejected, betrayed and maltreated, and who ends up dead on a cross? Mary is blessed because she believed in the faithfulness of God. Truly she personifies the maternal womb of God, that nurturing love which gave Jesus life over death and charges us with newness of life, the life of the children of God. Can we trust God? Can we feel loved and blessed, held together in his continuous bond of love? Even when touched by suffering and death, Lord of life, we pray with Mary, give us faith to love when our hearts feel cold. Give us hope when all seems lost and trust when we feel bereft. In Jesus, help us to find the source of our new life and our peace. Jesus Christ crucified, have mercy on us. The fourteenth station. Jesus lies buried. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by your holy cross, cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 42 to 46. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph, then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. 
So often we feel the failures of our hopes, our dreams and our plans. Our efforts may appear empty and our attempts fruitless. The stone is rolled across the entrance to our heart, on our relationships, our whole life. The stone shuts everything out. Yet unless the grain of wheat dies, it bears no fruit. Baptised in Christ, rooted in him, we are the bearers of his new life. We carry God's reassurance that with him nothing is impossible. Lord, help, help us, us to believe, believe that ends are but beginnings, beginnings and, and that the grave is but the doorway to a new life. For you are the Lord of the living and the dead. Jesus Christ crucified, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Almighty God, we pray that you will look graciously upon your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to die upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the, the love of God, and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, all now, now and, and evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.